CEO. Well, thank you so much. I managed to see two presentations yesterday on ethical design. One was from uh, Ria, another one was from, I forgot the, uh, the lady's name. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. right, correct. So okay. those are very, very clear cut eye openers because uh, when we are talking about, I mean, in one way, uh, basically we are thinking that, okay, hey, let's make chat, but so nice that, you know what? I mean, it's like uh, the same metaphor like uh, special effects, right? If the special effects is fantastic, then it doesn't look like special effects. And similarly, when the chatbots are so perfectly designed, they don't look and feel like chatbot. But then there is a valid concern that when the chatbots become too human, uh, there's an affordance problem. So, I mean, uh, all the more, like, you know, what I uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, I still have maybe five more minutes before the design starts, but uh, the presentation starts. But uh, I really think that this, uh, uh, you know, uh, multimodal devices. This is basically for next 10 years is the future for multimodal devices. Uh, we are tired, sick and tired of tapping on interfaces, clicking on interfaces. And it's the time that, uh, you know, uh, we use uh, VUI and uh, for that matter, like, you know, you, you don't have to kind of, you know, learn any navigation or nothing at one shot, you just skip all the navigation levels and go stri straight onto uh, where you want to go. So at the same time, like, you know, uh, voice recognitions, identifications, those kind of things are posing even more acute challenges, the challenges that we never thought uh, 10 years back that we would ever face, right? That level of challenge. I mean, the more easier we need to make uh, a, a kind of you know, voice interaction for a generic user, the more robust the uh, the artificial intelligence behind the chat chatbot, the voice recognition system should be, so that it can track all different sort of accents, way of speaking, and so on, but still kind of you know come to uh, unique uh, meaning. I mean, I would draw a parallel metaphor to. That's the way we recognize cursive handwriting, right? I can write in like 100 people would, uh, when, when they write something, all, all of the, the handwritings are very different, right? But you can still read what they have done, even if that's not a printed letter. So similarly, the same concept also applies with the voice recognition. Like everybody would have their own accents, own uh, kind of, you know, way of saying, but uh, uh, it's the onus is onto the, chatbot or the engine to recognize uh, what is being said. These are very basic things, but then, uh, you know, the more deeper, we, the, the, the deeper we get, uh, we kind of you know, start uh, thinking that how important these basics are. So, uh, and another thing is basically, uh, uh, you know, uh, but, but so one, one thing that I really, it was a very good eye opener is basically thinking about uh, when all the time we are thinking about say, as design professionals, right, design marketers, we're thinking about perfection, we're thinking about smartness, but uh, that sense of ethics, right, where is to draw the line? And uh, beyond that line, uh, kind of, you know, if I'm too much human like a chatbot, I must announce that, hey, listen, dude, I'm a chatbot, so that there is no affordance problem. So, uh, 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 I think fully, uh, we are now, uh, after 5G would get rolled out, there are many other things probably that would change in the next 10 years. Is Number one, I, I really think that people will slowly start, they'll uh, forget uh, how to write. And then uh, I guess uh, in 20 years, uh, probably we'll also forget how to drive and uh, so on. So. If we are thinking that, OK, I mean, you know what? Uh, uh, as digital uh, economy is coming, digital wave is coming and influencing our lives in so many different ways, it is also taking away so many things from us, right? And uh, basically, uh, the whole concept of game is very different now than the I'm 70s kid, right? So 
Uh, I still think that when, when, when someone says, when my son says game, what he means is basically a computer game, but to me, game is always, uh, <clears throat> you know, playing soccer with my friends when it's raining. So uh, things are changing and obviously uh, a lot of exciting products, uh, services, and more importantly, school of thoughts that are coming and influencing our day-to-day -day life. And uh, in this uh, kind of, you know, whole journey, artificial intelligence is basically no value-added stuff. It is design now. There are uh, kind of, you know, uh, products or services that is being conceptualized, which otherwise wouldn't have been possible without uh, the availability of advanced AI. So saying that, I would uh, again thank you all, especially Romy, uh, for inviting me to this fantastic symposium. And uh, that's it. I mean, that is all I can say now. So I think my time is almost started. One more meeting to go. So that's that. Yeah, th thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Joydeep Mukherjee. Uh, you gave us a really good feedback about what you thought about our uh, speeches yesterday and, uh, you know, uh, how we have to think uh, ethically and uh, especially, yeah, I think we all uh, uh, could feel the emotion uh, when uh, uh, Shamla mentioned about the, the chatbot. I think we could all relate to that. Uh, when it comes to AI and uh, emotions in general. Yeah, so glad, glad to have you here, Mr. Joydeep Mukherjee. Uh, and thanks to Romi for coordinating uh, and having you over here uh, in our symposium. And um, uh, we welcome you. Um, a little introduction about uh, Mr. Joydeep. Uh, he is a director at uh, TCS Interactive. He is an experienced design leader with more than 18 years of industry experience in India and the USA. Uh, he is logging in uh, from the USA at a very early time uh, now for you, right? Early morning. Um, well, what is the time there, uh, Joydeep? No, it, it's, 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 it's not very early. It's uh, 7.30 now. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think similar time. Even yesterday when Elizabeth joined, it was 7.30 for her in, in Boston. And then Rhea joined from the Bay Area at 7.30. So yeah, we've been uh, having like very early uh, start of uh, the days for uh, you all in the US. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, going with the theme of our symposium, uh, Joydeep will be talking about thoughts on AI enabled consumer ba banking. So along with my team from Solve by Design, IDF Kolkata, Design Kolkata, and our supporters, Webby's, Live Holistic and Designers, we uh, extend uh, our welcome to you, Mr. Joydeep. Yep, uh, please take control of the... Thank you, thank you. I would like to share some thoughts on AI-enabled consumer banking. We all are surrounded by easy, instant, seamless, and smart digital services delivered real-time by a smartphone. We onboard in a few clicks, accomplish all standard service functions to the app, and switch providers anytime we are not satisfied. How AI could influence user experience is too vast a topic. So, before this presentation, I approached 37 consumers across four countries between the age group of 25 to 45. I wanted to know that apart from Google, Amazon, Facebook, and LinkedIn, what personalized app they use most frequently and why? 31 respondents said the personal banking apps are the most important and frequently used app. It helps them manage their money and assures financial well-being. Today, customers do not go to banks. Banks come to customers via apps. Banks strive to provide more meaningful and contextual experiences to customers to remain relevant to them and to retain them. Each consumer has specific expectations and yes, AI is constantly turning implicit needs into rewarding personalized consumer banking experiences. When I try to understand today's banking consumers, I see them mostly as multitasking, impatient, social media savvy people who value the personal goals more than ever before. 
Though consumers have endless demands from their banking systems, have a quick, easy, and safe G no. UI and the most G important access to flexibility are customers. When I try to understand today's banking consumers, I see them mostly as multitasking, impatient, social media savvy people who value the personal goals more than ever before. Though consumers have endless demands from their banking systems, have a quick, easy, and safe GUI and VUI access, financial flexibility, customized financial advice and tips to improve financial profile, best deals in any banking touchpoint, and a robust and secure financial document repository top the wish list. Is it all? No. The most important ask from the consumers are human empathy and contextual intelligence of banking systems, which help this connect with customers at a human level. This is when I came across my bank. This notion of my could further be expanded to my voice, me, myself, and my money. A multimodal assistant app that provides quick and simple ways to interact either through the UI typing or voice. Less interaction cost, hands-free control, accessibility, speed, and most importantly, emotion and personality ensures elevated experience. Many consumers want to see their own reflections in the banking app. One look at it and they understand how well he or she is doing financially. We also realized how customer's facial expression could be used to relate with his or her current financial status better and if required, communicate the level of urgency to improve it. Seventy percent of the time, average consumers use banking apps to see their balance and transactions. So a clear breakdown of different account types, recent transactions, and a persistent presence of the chat bar is highly recommended. My banking app must show intelligence in most common interactions. Conversational UI knows when to drive with questions and response patterns and when to allow inputs through traditional means. Clear and simple conversational snippets provide contextual support during each transactional journey to make complex interactions simple. Future forecasting of payments with simple and actionable suggestions help consumers effectively manage their money. User needs a clear overview of actions to be performed in a prioritized order, a breakdown of what they put into, and a quick way of accomplishing more, for example, paying multiple bills at once. And that brings us to another key performance parameter. My banking app should prioritize my banking tasks. A flexible system allows coexistence of multiple notification types in a prioritized manner. And yes, the visual element of notification must connect to the chat bar.
At its core, AI is almost synonymous to constantly learning from users' banking interactions and providing contextual advices. Many of us are impulsive shoppers and often cannot check the temptations to buy even if we are on a tight budget. We see Martha right there, incredibly happy inside her favorite dress shop. Now she is also a MyBank customer. If MyBank could be given the control to track a customer, it can track him or her inside shops where he or she made heavy purchases in the past. Before or at the time of transaction, it would generate messages to highlight the consumer's upcoming payments and warn that an impulsive purchase could impact his or her finances negatively. You see here, Martha is being advised to shop within $50 to maintain a healthy balance in a checking account. Next, a personalized banking app must help user plan his or her financial goals and profile. Here, we will see how my bank app details out customer's budget alongside an interactive conversational snippet showing the impact of the purchase. We talked about using user's own facial expression to indicate his or her financial wellness earlier. Monthly budget is one of the most common and popular way to manage finances. So are tailored advice and promotions related to their current wellness status. Saving for significant life events is not an easy task. User must be presented budgets that are derived by historical spending to make the saving plan achievable and scalable. Hope you observed how our user deliberated between two long-term serving options before settling with one. All of us are increasingly becoming paperless and in desperate search of one well-defined hub of all our financial records. This brings to the next feature where the consumer banking app extends to become a user's one-stop repository of all financial records. As you see, we are flooded with important financial records from many providers and gathering systematic and up-to-date financial data from all of them is indeed time and effort consuming. It also leaves enough room for human error. If user provides my bank the permission to gather electronic transcripts of all his or her banking and financial records from various service providers, my bank would get his or her financial data real time from them uh, and store it in one designated repository. User only needs to select the reason such as buying a new house or yearly tax file. My bank will bundle up standard documents required for that purpose. Then user can define the recipient and transmit his or her 
financial data electronically to relevant recipients using my bank transfer. In this case, user selects mortgage loan and defines the recipient. All standard documents required for applying for a mortgage loan gets bundled up. This is the most current set of documents and good to go to the desired recipient. Because this data are non-editable and completely free from any human error or human intervention, it could drastically reduce the processing time and cost. Next, we would move towards merging traditional banking experience with the demand of participatory crowdfunding platform. Selling pods are crowdfunding platforms within my bank that helps in contributing and accumulating small amount of money from many participants in regular interval and monitor its accumulation to expenditure. Here we see our friend Tamara's saving spot for office. All the 72 participants are her office colleagues. My bank synchronizes with user social extensions to gather con contact information of each of users, friends, or contact persons. The automatic synchronization minimizes wrong data entry due to human errors. Here, Tamara has selected the new girl, TD, to be added to the office board. We would now take a break from any of the GUI interaction and explore the multimodal nature of the banking app a bit more. Anna McLean, 36. She's a baker, runs own bakery and cake shop in Plano, Texas. She has customers all over Texas and usually drives down to clients if the order is big. Anna uses My Bank Bill Pay app for various bill pay activities. Usually, she pays all her bills through a combination of checking, account, and credit cards. In some instances, she executes some payments using a savings account. Now she's driving to Austin, Texas for an important meeting and talking to her MyBank app. Hi, MyBank. This is Anna84. Hi, Anna. What can I do for you today? Do I have any overdue bills? Okay, let me check. You have a one-week overdue utility bill. You must also pay your My Bank credit card and mortgage payment to Quicken Loans today to avoid any late fees. I will pay all three bills right now. Okay, you have not set up any payment source for any of these three billers. So please tell me where to pay from for each payment. Could we start with your utility bill because that is past due? Okay, pay my utility bill using My Bank checking account. Okay. Your November 2020 utility bill of $217.31 has been paid in full using your U.S. Bank checking account, which ends with 6675. The transaction number is ABCD123456, and the transaction record has been mailed to Anna Baker at gmail.com. Okay, now pay the monthly interest amount from my MyBank Easy Credit Card. Use my MyBank checking account. Your MyBank checking account ending with 6675 now has a $303 balance, but your credit card bill is $417. Initiating the credit card payment from there will result in a negative account balance and will trigger a $35 fine for each transaction afterwards. Should I still proceed? No, no, wait, is there any other way to pay this bill? You have earned 55,400 loyalty points on your credit card so far. If you choose to monetize part of that, you can pay your credit card balance with that. Really? I can do that? Go ahead and pay my credit card bill with points. Okay. Your November 2020 credit card bill of $417 has been paid in full using 41,700 loyalty points. The transaction number is MNOP456789. And the transaction record has been emailed to Anna Baker at gmail.com. You now have 13,700 loyalty points left. Wow, thanks. Now, please pay my mortgage bill using my bank savings account. Okay, 
I see that money has already been withdrawn from this account five times this month. And because of that, a $25 fee under Regulation D would be triggered. Should I still proceed? No. Is there an alternative way to pay this bill? Okay. I see that you've been receiving a payment of $4,500 from Brady's Cake Shop on the 14th of each month for the past six months. Today is the 12th. Are you also expecting the same payment on the 14th of November, 2020? Yes, I am. Okay, though you should ideally pay your mortgage on the first day of each month. You still enjoy a grace period of 15 days to avoid any late fees. You should pay for your mortgage after two days. By then, you would have $4,500 from Brady's Cake Shop in your checking account. That is a good suggestion. But what if I forget to pay this bill? Well, do you want me to set up your mortgage bill to pay on the 14th of November as an auto debit? Yes, please. Okay, your mortgage bill payment has been set up on the 14th of November as an auto debit. Is there anything else I can do? That works. Thank you so much, my bank. I think that is all for now. In this example, we saw how the intelligent chatbot helped Anna right from user authentication to help in search and find situations, asking for clarity before committing to a task, displaying contextual awareness before deriving solution, and notification of future tasks it would take up when the user goes offline. In our next story, we have Manolo Rodriguez, who is a plumber an electrician, runs own business in Palo Alto, California. He serves customers all over Bay Area and usually drives down to their residences. He's on a tight budget these days as COVID-19 has impacted his business considerably. Manolo uses My Bank app for reasons similar to Anna. Now he's driving to the Saratoga County for a repair job and talking to his My Bank app. Hi, My Bank. This is Manolo 99. Hi, Manolo. What can I do for you today? Uh, can you set up an automated monthly payment for my utility bill? Sure. What is the name of your utility provider? Green Mountain Energy and Utilities. Okay. I have found it from your previous transactions. Now, which banking account should be the payment source for this automated monthly payment? Use my bank credit card account. Green Mountain Energy and Utilities offers a 15% cash back if customers use a checking account with direct deposit. Would you still want to pay your monthly utility bill using your MyBank credit card? No, pay my utility bill using my bank checking account with direct deposit. Great. An automated monthly payment of your utility bill with Green Mountain Energies and Utilities has been set up on November 12th at 8.54 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and this record has been emailed to you. The bill will have a different amount due each month. You will continue to receive payment reminders unless you decide to opt out from them. Thank you. Please also add my HOA as a new biller and set that up for an automated monthly payment. What is the name of your HOA organization? Associa. Unfortunately, I could not find Associa using my lookup, but let me check on the web. What phone number or mail ID is associated with this HOA account? My phone number associated with this account is 972-123-4567. Thank you. I have found Associa and also your membership with them. Can you please confirm the property address? It is 777 West Middlefield Road, Mountain View, California, 94043. Which banking account should be the payment source for this automated monthly payment for your HOA bill? Pay my HOA bill using my bank credit card. Unfortunately, Associa accepts only checking accounts with direct deposit. Oh. Then use my bank checking account with direct deposit. Okay. An automated monthly payment of your HOA bill with Associa has been set up on November 12th at 
8.54 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and this record has been emailed to you. The bill would have the same amount due every month. You will continue to receive payment reminders unless you decide to opt out from them. Thank you. Is there anything else I can help with today? Why don't you give me a tip or two on better money management? Sure, I see that you are spending almost everything you are earning, and your monthly savings is almost negligible. That is right. My business needs continuous investment and upgrades. It virtually leaves no money for a systematic investment. I would suggest you enroll for Acorn, which automatically collects spare change from each of your transactions and invests in the stock market. 350 top brands would invest in you every time you shop with Acorn. If you start investing now, you will have a substantial savings in a few years without taxing your daily cash flow. That is a great suggestion, but I got to stop now as I've reached my destination. Please remind me of this Acorn thing when we talk next time, okay? Okay, in the meanwhile, I would look for more information on Acorn. Bye for now. Adios, amigo. In this example, we saw how the intelligent chatbot helped Manolo. My bank chatbot displayed contextual intelligence-based suggestions, intelligent search and membership authentication, third-party service provider compliance, data driven intelligence, proactiveness, and customer commitment. I would now move on to one of my favorite problems in consumer bank. Are you sure that you know the current balance in your checking account? Well, the fact is, if payments are made in various providers' website using the banking credentials or debit card, it usually takes six hours to two to three days to get reflected in the user's banking transaction records. As transaction records do not get refreshed real time, users do not see the exact balance during this time. For any loan, my bank keeps track if the user paid more than his or her monthly payment in the past. If he or she ever comes to zero balance, for any loan, my bank keeps track if the user paid more than his or her monthly payment in the past. If he or she ever comes to zero balance situation, the app recalls the user's overpayments in the past and use that as a credit to waive zero balance penalty fees. After all, users expect human empathy and contextual intelligence from banking systems to connect with them at a human level. Now is the time for closing remarks. When we look back at a few of these innovations that changed consumer banking, like Wells Fargo offered internet banking to consumers in May 95, to Barclay Card issued the first contactless cards in September 2007, or when USAA enabled customers to deposit checks with a smartphone app, we see how artificial intelligence constantly challenged the very notion and possibilities of banking. Clear Exchange Service launched a person-to-person -person payment in April 2011, where centers only needed recipient's ID or mobile number. We know it as Zelle now, which revolutionized peer-to-peer -peer money transfer. More recently, Ally Bank implemented a virtual assistant chatbot, Ally Assist, in 2015. And almost for the last two years, AB and AMRO customers can pay transactions under 25 euros with tokenized accounts using wearables without a battery. Of course, the numbers themselves are testimonials to the impact of these innovations. These remain poster boys of reliable, trusted, and self-designed systems that are highly automated, allows a great degree of user control, and dramatically enhance human performance. Of course, my bank was a figment of imagination and no such product exists. It was merely a metaphor to nest a few exciting AI-enabled consumer banking features and functionalities. But one thing is for certain that banks can meet rising customer expectations only by applying AI to offer intelligent propositions and smart servicing that can seamlessly embed in partner ecosystems. 
The value of reimagined customer engagement, the elements of the reimagined engagement layer, and integrated supporting capabilities will remain baseline expectations for any AI enabled bank. As long as the aspect of understanding customers will involve decoding their real needs from the perceived needs, understanding consumer behaviors, journeys, and practices, and the user context and preferences, UX process and AI enablement would remain two major complementary forces to define any digital imagination journey. Hi everyone. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes, uh, we can hear you. Thank you. So, so that's kind of uh, what I thought uh, uh, for today's session. And if there is any question, any conversation, I would glad to. I would be glad to take part. Any questions? I'm sure it was very insightful and we were probably all at the end of our seats uh, listening to Joydeep's uh, presentation uh, because it's like a everyday thing for us, right? Each one of us have uh, something to do with banking on a day to day basis. Um, it was really nice how uh, in the presentation uh, Joydeep had like real life personas uh, to exhibit the ideas and scenarios. And um, I'm sure m all of this is non-fictional, right? I mean, a few years back, this would seem like a fiction movie. Uh, people, you know, just uh, conversing with a machine and a machine uh, equally beautifully responding to the human. Uh, it, it was enriching uh, to know about the intelligent uh, chatbot. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that's what I felt. I mean, this was a takeaway for me. Any Anybody else who wants to share their experience? about the presentation how many of you have seen RT, uh, uh, minority report it's a very old film but still uh, uh, I, mean, I, I hope most of us have seen that film anyway so it was made in 97 and 97 98 they started making this film and it was released i think in 2001 so uh, that film the way it has shown product promotion a traffic system, user recognition, etc., uh, future of media, three dimensional media that is going to happen in 2056. Many of these things are actually already showing uh, signs of coming true. So, typical user recognition when somebody is passing through a shop, the shop is actually calling that person that, hey, John Anderton, you can just, uh, you know, uh, go for a vacation or buy a new shirt. So similarly, like, you know, if not that and, and so not so dramatic way, but uh, as we all know that, okay, we surf something and then right after that you go to Amazon or Google, you suddenly see, oh my God, somebody was sneaking. I mean, how did this uh, browser get to know that I was whatever, whatever, whatever. So I actually started getting deals after that. So uh, as again, I mean, just to continue from yesterday's discussion that of course, uh, we cannot stop a creative mind from thinking about solutions and possibilities and all that. That's very, very, very important that uh, no matter what, probably we don't have uh, certain solutions for some security breach today with today's technology. But that does not mean that we should stop exploring. The more we would explore, the more tougher problems will come to us and eventually we'll, we'll overcome that. And when we get the solution after that, that becomes much, much more or much more mature than we ever thought of. So that's what that's all. Uh, I, I think that's how I can summarize the, the the phase and the kind of, you know, the changes that it is causing in our behavior, the way we are even thinking about conceptualizing or even the the, the speed at which we, we are having to kind of, you know, mock up a thought or present or quickly get feedback. So those kind of, you know, it's so, so amazing to see that 10 years back, I mean, most of our projects used to be con conducted or uh, managed in waterfall. Now, uh, nobody probably knows that there used to be a process called waterfall, right? So 
it's extremely agile and hyper hyper agile world and uh, probably that is kind of you know going to be even more insane and incredible when uh, finally uh, you know uh, v vui uh, makes its ways to more uh, mission critical applications right now most of the cases it's in the very nascent state but uh, sooner or later uh, i i see uh, i see that very clearly that uh, this using this graphic inter user interface will be thing of past and uh, mostly we will just stop and that's it great great insight a anybody having any questions i'm sure this was very thought provoking and uh, something new so how how directly have you used uh, anything like this uh, sir in your experience how how real is this and how uh, you know how common is it um, I, i think it's fairly common see the thing is like uh, you know uh, 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 when i was growing up in india in kolkata obviously you know, i had uh, probably my parents or relatives to tell me story when my son grew up here he was mostly alone and google told him stories so uh, when i <coughs> when i was his age and uh, obviously i need to save money uh, you know uh, from all small small occasions to buy that favorite cassette of mine right right now uh, probably uh, my son's generation will just say hey alex i play that song so things have changed a lot and when we we don't really think of as uh, uh, as basically right now uh, obviously intelligent home is basically that's a kind of you know becoming the new normal where uh, people won't even kind of bother to press the switch and all he would do is say hey i'm home and that's it his uh, you know his preferred lighting and his preferred music and all the stats this is no longer science fiction it's it's uh, all i have to do is basically i have to set my alexa my bot accordingly right so similarly like you know when we are talking about anything and everything for that matter right uh, all the answers are there there is uh, i still think that okay in mid 90s when i was studying in national institute of design when we were supposed to write some papers we literally used to run to his library because we knew that okay, there's only only three copies of the book if i don't grab one i won't be able to finish up writing my paper today the whole world is at my fingertip all i have to know is how to look for where to look for and when to look for so uh, when you see that this entire uh, like you know when we are getting into this artificial intelligence driven uh, uh, thing where Uh, proactively i am always being watched right if i watch certain things in any media suddenly for the other media service start showing me similar kind of movies or similar kind of uh, kind of you know uh, media components if i buy x product right after that for next one or one or two weeks i'll continue to get promotions of similar kind of product so in certain ways in a, even a surface level we can see that okay this is this our privacy is being breached but hey we don't need to take ourselves that seriously because this is just algorithm okay and it will forget me very soon but the point is what we really need to think of especially as a creative professionals is when we are talking about artificial intelligence driven uh, you know products or life or philosophy we need to kind of you know keep a very very good grounded approach otherwise probably the most basic of problems will ground us right say for example we get too used to this entire automated life right and suddenly the transformer busts there is no electricity there should not be a situation where uh, i should never know that how to wash my clothes uh, without using a machine there should never be a situation where i should not know that how to uh, kind of you know uh, uh cook the basic things when i do not have a gas oven so these are slowly probably uh, i would say that, that this the basic skills are becoming survival skills today 
so yeah i mean i i really think that okay this is a lot of crisscross of ideas and times are changing and we are living the living through the change so very exciting times it definitely is yeah uh, you know sometimes it, i can't wait to see what what more is coming i mean where else uh, uh, things can go uh, with the <laughs> speed at which it is going uh, i think whatever uh, ai or not uh, uh, the end point is uh, control uh, human control like just like yeah, one wh one more one more uh, thing that i can see is, is happening in probably next few years is when the automated cars invade human civilization but first of all we lose one skill we'll forget how to drive second thing what happens to insurance you cannot make a machine pay insurance premium right so uh, does that mean that okay uh, you know we don't we wouldn't need insurance not not of course the the insurance organizations will find some other way to to is the insurance in some ways one possible outcome of that is probably people will already new generation out here we see they stop buying houses and cars their rent generation of renters right so now 10 years or 15 years down the line probably the mainstream practice would be not to own a car because uh, the moment you're own, owning a car uh, you're paying for all 24 hours but you're using the car only for 3 hours right if that is the case then this entire riding becomes a service you just pay for only the time that you use for so uh, this kind of disruptions are round the corner and very soon one or after uh, one or one after another will start impacting us but uh, again impact is a very heavy word for that we 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 really forgot we have really forgotten how it was to listen to a cassette right so uh, but it was not too far i mean it was not too long back and i still have hundreds of cassettes at my home but none of them work that's a different story but then uh, when i explain what this is to my son i really don't know how to explain right so things are changing and we slowly slowly get so much used to this change that we realize the change we need look back can we really imagine that a, a, a life without mobile and internet but hey it's just 15 years 15 years back i mean how many people had mobile and mobile internet was like something like a, of a science, science fiction in india for such a long time having a mobile connection or even mobile charges was so expensive coming out going this that now today in the whole world india's internet charges are lowest right it's almost free so things change and uh, uh, basically uh, the most as, as as we all know that okay, the most constant thing about life is change and uh, there is no other better metaphor than the digital enable changes the way it is influencing our thought process our lifestyle and definitely the way we think about solutions yeah you you are very right change is the only constant and um, you leave us with a lot of uh, thought provoking uh, information mm -hmm. um, uh, really thank you so much uh, mr joydeep again for uh, joining us uh, a very early morning for you on a weekday Um, yeah thank you so much again you have a wonderful day